Part One of the Gospel According to St. Mark. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to find out how you can volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Gospel According to St. Mark, Chapters One and Two. The Good News According to Mark. The Beginning of the Good News of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the Prophets, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way before you. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Make ready the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John came baptizing in the wilderness, and preaching the baptism of repentance for forgiveness of sins. All the country of Judea, and all those of Jerusalem, went out to him. They were baptized by him in the Jordan River, confessing their sins. John was clothed with camel's hair, and a leather belt around his waist. He ate locusts and wild honey. He preached, saying, After me comes he who is mightier than I, the thong of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and loosen. I baptized you in water, but he will baptize you in the Holy Spirit. It happened in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee, and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Immediately coming up from the water, he saw the heavens parting, and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. A voice came out of the sky, You are my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Immediately the Spirit drove him out into the wilderness. He was there in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan. He was with the wild animals, and the angels were serving him. Now, after John was taken into custody, Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the good news of the kingdom of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent, and believe in the good news. Passing along by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, the brother of Simon, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Jesus said to them, Come after me, and I will make you into fishers for men. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. Going a little further from there, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, who were also in the boat, mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired servants, and went after him. They went into Capernaum and immediately on the Sabbath day he entered into the synagogue and taught. They were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as having authority, and not as the scribes. Immediately there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, saying, Ha! What do we have to do with you, Jesus, you Nazarene? Have you come out to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be quiet, and come out of him. The unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, so that they questioned among themselves, saying, What is this, a new teaching? For with authority he commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. The report of him went out immediately, everywhere, into all the region of Galilee and its surrounding area. Immediately, when they had come out of the synagogue, they came into the house of Simon and Andrew, with James and John. Now Simon's wife's mother lay sick with a fever, and immediately they told him about her. He came and took her by the hand, and raised her up. The fever left her, and she served them. At evening, when the sun had set, they brought to him all who were sick, and those who were possessed by demons. All the city was gathered together at the door. He healed many who were sick with various diseases, and cast out many demons. He didn't allow the demons to speak, because they knew him. Early in the morning, while it was still dark, he rose up and went out, and departed into a deserted place, and prayed there. Simon and those who were with him followed after him, and they found him, and told him, "'Everyone is looking for you.' He said to them, "'Let's go elsewhere, into the next towns.' that I may preach there also, because I came out for this reason. He went into their synagogues throughout all Galilee, 
preaching and casting out demons. A leper came to him, begging him, kneeling down to him, and saying to him, If you want to, you can make me clean. Being moved with compassion, he stretched out his hand and touched him, and said to him, I want to. Be made clean. When he had said this, immediately the leprosy departed from him, and he was made clean. He strictly warned him, and immediately sent him out, and said to him, See that you say nothing to anybody, but go show yourself to the priest, and offer for your cleansing the things which Moses commanded for a testimony to them. But he went out, and began to proclaim it much, and to spread about the matter, so that Jesus could no more openly enter into a city, but was outside in desert places, and they came to him from everywhere. A few days later Jesus went back to Capernaum, and the news spread that he was at home. So many people came together that there was no room left, not even out in front of the door. Jesus was preaching the message to them when four men arrived, carrying a paralyzed man to Jesus. Because of the crowd, however, they could not get the man to him. So they made a hole in the roof, right above the place where Jesus was. When they had made an opening, they let the man down, lying on his mat. Seeing how much faith they had, Jesus said to the paralyzed man, My son, your sins are forgiven. Some teachers of the law, who were sitting there, thought to themselves, How does he dare talk like this? This is blasphemy. God is the only one who can forgive sins. At once Jesus knew what they were thinking. So he said to them, Why do you think such things? Is it easier to say to this paralyzed man, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Get up, pick up your mat, and walk? I will prove to you, then, the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the paralyzed man, I tell you, get up, pick up your mat, and go home. While they all watched, the man got up, picked up his mat, and hurried away. They were all completely amazed, and praised God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. Jesus went back again to the shore of Lake Galilee. A crowd came to him, and he started teaching them. As he walked along, he saw a tax collector, Levi, son of Alphaeus, sitting in his office. Jesus said to him, Follow me. Levi got up and followed him. Later on, Jesus was having a meal in Levi's house. A large number of tax collectors and other outcasts was following Jesus, and many of them joined him and his disciples at the table. Some teachers of the law who were Pharisees, saw that Jesus was eating with these outcasts and tax-collectors, so they asked his disciples, Why does he eat with such people? Jesus heard them, and answered, People who are well do not need a doctor, but only those who are sick. I have not come to call respectable people, but outcasts. On one occasion the followers of John the Baptist and the Pharisees were fasting. Some people came to Jesus and asked him, why is it that the disciples of John the Baptist and the disciples of the Pharisees fast, but yours do not? Jesus answered, Do you expect the guests at a wedding party to go without food? Of course not. As long as the bridegroom is with them, they will not do that. But the day will come when the bridegroom will be taken away from them, and then they will fast. No one uses a piece of new cloth to patch up an old coat, because the new patch will shrink and tear off some of the old cloth, making an even bigger hole. Nor does any one pour new wine into used wine-skins, because the wine will burst the skins, and both the wine and the skins will be ruined. Instead, new wine must be poured into fresh wine-skins. Jesus was walking through some wheat-fields on a Sabbath. As his disciples walked along with him, they began to pick the heads of wheat. So the Pharisees said to Jesus, Look! It is against our law for your disciples to do that on the Sabbath. Jesus answered, Have you never read what David did the time when he needed something to eat? He and his men were hungry, so he went into the house of God and ate the bread offered to God. This happened when Abiathar was the high priest. According to our law, only the priests may eat this bread, but David ate it, and even gave it to his men. And Jesus concluded, the Sabbath was made for the good of human beings. They were not made for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. End of Part 1 of the Gospel According to St. Mark